Hello everybody and welcome back to Coffee Talk. We're back with another day after the adorableness that was last time. We got to get... Oh, I'm still a little sad though because we did have to say goodbye to Silver and Amanda. But we did get invited to a wedding, which is exciting, very exciting. We're gonna go to the wedding, heck yeah. But for now, we must focus on whatever comes today. So let's see, Neko Mimi driver crashes truck filled with catnip, suspected DUI. UFO previously spotted by space guard fighters, a very determined hot air balloon, aww. ZXX 20 virus vaccine booster ready for distribution. Oh, the zombie virus, right. Let's start the day. Ooh, I've already got three things. One second. <gasps> Aqua! Oh, it's so good to see you! Hello, Miss Aqua, give me one second. We haven't seen you in ages. Uh, let's see. I told my wife that she needs to embrace her mistakes. She gave me a hug. Oh, no. Taking an easy day because self-care is important. Don't forget to take a good rest once in a while, too. That is good advice for everyone. Listen to Rachel. Good night. <laughs> good night, Lucas. Hello, Miss Aqua. Hi, Abby. How are you? Good, as usual. How about you? Um... Honestly, lots of things have happened. Yeah, I've only seen you once. What happened since then? C can I order something first, though? Of course! What would you like? Um... Can you make me a cup of chai? Okay, I'm glad you only said chai. Otherwise, we were gonna have a problem. Do I know how to make chai? I don't think I do. This might take a... Yeah, I don't. Okay, so let's see. Tea, milk, and ginger. Tea, lemon, honey. Tea, lemon, cinnamon, 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 What about... I don't know how to make chai. Is chai. Flavor tea. Cinnamon. So tea, tea, cinnamon? Or didn't I do that before? Hang on. I did. Goodness gracious. There we go. All right. Uh, serve. A cup of masala chai for the lady with eclectic tastes. <laughs> Thank you. It's delicious. I'm glad. Took a while to figure it out. You're welcome. So, you were saying... Oh, right. It's just I've been busy working on my game. Oh, I see. How's it going? It's pretty difficult, but I'll manage. I'm glad to hear that. How's that contract you talked about the other day going? Oh, that. I rejected it, of course. There's no saving it, really, which is a shame. I truly like their games. But with all the shady requirements they had, I could tell they looked down on us, small developers. And the scary thing is... If, if I hadn't known what I know now, j just because they were a publisher I loved a lot, I, I would have overlooked all that. That's understandable, though. You trusted them not to take advantage of you. Uh, well, it has to be fair for both of us, right? Because at the end of the day, it's business. But, I don't know. Yeah. Actually, I tried negotiating with them, because I wondered if they still had any good faith left. Don't tell Myrtle, okay? <laughs> okay. But as expected, it really didn't go anywhere. Instead, they insisted that they're doing me a favor since I'm just a small developer. And I wasn't thinking rationally or in business terms. Oof. Doesn't sound like good faith to me. Right? Considering the unfair conditions they're expecting me to accept, they could have at least been polite about it. I doubt they care, though. Yeah... That aside, Myrtle is coming here soon. Great! 
So you two made up already? <laughs> yes. We apologized to each other. Nice. I know I was probably being a little confusing. I didn't explain the context I applied to the situation very well, but she made it clear that she understood why I was anxious, and she apologized for assuming. <laughs> that really helped. Now she's helping me speed up development. I'm happy to hear that. You guys are cute together. Is that Myrtle? Hey! Hey. Hi, Myrtle. We were just talking about you. Okay. Nothing too terrible, I hope. And don't worry, only all the good stuff. <laughs> anyway, sorry, Abby. I won't be ordering today. What? Oh, come on. Why? We don't have time. We're going to the expo sale, right? Oh, you're right. Expo sale? We're hunting new parts for my PC. It's been a bit slow lately. <laughs> a bit? She's joking. It's pretty much in its death throes. If we're going, we're building you a whole new setup. But... If you just want parts, I can always give you mine. But at this point, I'm not sure it'll be any help at all, to be honest with you. Yeah... No, you're right! It's time to move forward with the productivity. I've been putting off upgrading things for a while now, so it really is time for a better setup. That's the spirit. <laughs> go big or go home. <laughs> Sorry, Abby. It seems like we have to go now. Thanks for the drink. I'll see you later. Yeah, take care. Safe trip and good luck. Oh, bye guys, leaving already. Let's see. I think someone else is here, one second. Spiced tea from Southern Asia. Let's see. Uh, and then, ah, friendship up, nice. All right, who's here? Let's see. I guess I'll go over today's checklist, hmm? Who's that? Oh my gosh! It's you! I haven't seen you in ages! Gala! I have something for you! Well, hello, gentlemen. Hey, Abby. Yabby. Nice seeing you here, Hendry. How goes it? Good, good, good. I see you're doing good, too. As usual. What do you want to drink, Hendry? It's on me. No, 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 that won't do. Well, let's talk about bills later. So, what'll it be? You first. You sure? Okie dokie. I'll have one STMJ, please. Ah, I actually have the recipe this time. Someone ordered it before, I believe. So I won't be freaking out about it this time. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. I do. Okay. <laughs> Milk. Ginger. Honey. Nice. STMJ. Do I have any items for you? I do not. I'm waiting to give the other one to Gala. Somebody's got to get it. One STMJ coming up. Ah, it smells so nice. Spot on. Thanks, Yabby. You're very welcome. How about you, sir? Oh, it's my turn. Something with ginger, please. Anything else with that? Well, what would you recommend? Anything from your new tea line is fine. Oh, I see you have a new selection. Yes, we have blue pea and hibiscus tea available. Hibiscus, huh? You should try Te Jahe Rosella. I probably butchered that, I apologize. It's pretty good for this kind of weather. Sounds familiar. It's ginger steeped with roselle buds, another name for hibiscus. Anything else in it? Well, it's a bit sweet. Interesting. I'll try it then. Te Jahe Rosella. Wait, fuck, what did he say? Uh, okay, it was hibiscus and then the ginger and then a bit of sweetness, so that's honey. Oh yeah, wait, did I already make that before and I just didn't remember? Is that what G Hyde likes? Maybe it is. Here, let's, let's, uh, special invitation card for a certain someone. I'm gonna give this to Gala. Serve it up. Oh yeah, it is, I have made it before, I just forgot. Hmm, what's this? Oh, it's Bailey and Lua's wedding invitation. Really? For Hyde. Oh. The date is really soon. Could you pass it along to him since I'm not sure he'll be there? Hmm. Huh. Okay, sure. Thank you. A piping cup of Tejahe Rosella for you. Thanks. Gala, I hope you know that you're invited too. They specifically told me they knew you were gonna be Hyde's plus one. What do you think, Hendry? Does it look any good? Uh-oh. It looks about right. 
It smells good too. Try it. Yep, it's good. I'm glad I passed her impromptu test. So, what's been going on? A lot, a lot. Did I miss anything? Aliens, ghosts, uh, angry cats, secret agents trying to shut down my business. Ah, you, just, you didn't miss much, don't worry. Heh. <laughs> um, something happened, didn't it? You can say that. I think the officer is coming too, by the way. Oh, Georgie? Alright. As for me, I'm just glad my fury is over. Are you okay, though? I'm fine, as you can see. How are you managing, Henry? Did you get your checkup? I did, I did. Rachel pestered me to get it done all week, so I had to do it. Good, listen to your daughter. Good. There's no doubt I need to slow down. I can feel it in my bones. Time is a harsh mistress, as they say. Ain't that the truth? But I don't think you get to complain, though. <laughs> Why not? You know my body isn't what it used to be anymore. Oh? I mean, compared to my prime. 50 years ago. <laughs> I'm kidding. Truth is, my body doesn't hold up well when I'm transforming anymore. Oh, is that so? Yep. The soreness doesn't go away as quick as it used to. It's harder to get up in the morning after that. Like today. Uh, I know the feeling all too well. Especially in this kind of weather. Oh? It's like my body knows if a storm's gonna get worse. No weather forecast can match the accuracy of my joints. Ha 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 I'm too young for this conversation. Just kidding, I have a really bad knee, I get it. Luckily for you, Ginger is great for sore muscles. I actually do, by the way. I got an MRI done, but we never followed up on it, so I don't know what's wrong. Yeah. Georgie! What's up? How you doing? You look sad, as normal. Hey, folks. The man of the hour. Hiya, Georgie. Yeah, me what I miss. Some very important weather talk. Joints, bad legs, all that jazz. Is that so? Sounds like I missed a ton, then. How are you? <laughs> How am I? If you're talking about my case, well... I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> That's always a good sign. Hendry, you know nothing about what I'm, uh, I'm about to say, right? Uh, no? What are we talking about? Yeah, but you should have primed him before I got here. <laughs> my bad. In my defense, I didn't know you were coming until Mr. Gala mentioned it. Excuses, excuses. I'll explain it to Hendry. In short, there's been a string of car vandalisms nearby. <laughs> 20 minutes later! <laughs> so he's trying to figure out if the tree being gone has anything to do with the case. And that's where we are now. Yep, that's about it. That's a lot to take in. Anything new happened since? Is that a good smoke break or a bad smoke break? Well, I tried something. I set a few candles where the tree was. Oh, I used my lighter and things happened. Oh, you listened to Detective McQueen, did ya? Mind backing up a bit? Feel like there's a lot of context missing here. Well, I'm warning ya. Everything I'm about to tell you is real. It'll sound a little crazy, but no, I haven't lost it yet. It's 100% found footage, Blair Witch Project style, totally real. Got it? Loud and clear. I told Yabby about my lighter a while ago. How it might be connected to the fairy market we talked about before. Really? In what way? The lighter was my grandpa's. And there's a chance he bought it from there. Entry's face. Ah, interesting. Yep, what a coincidence, eh? <laughs> oh no. Anyways, my daughter likes this sort of mystery stuff, right? After talking to her about what's been going on, she believed my lighter was the key to making sense of all of this. And gave me some pointers. So, I went back there last night. To the spot, you know? To where the tree used to be. I lit a few candles there, put the lighter right in the middle of it all. I'll be honest, it was spooky as heck. The air was still and I felt tension in my head. Wasn't sure if it was just me being creeped out or if there was something else going on. Whatever it was, I thought I should leave it alone. So I followed my gut and got the heck out of there. Always trust your gut. Th th then what happened? It blew up. What? 
What do you mean, what? The lighter, it just blew up. Well, what do you mean, blew up? Y yeah, I think we definitely need more context here. Well, I didn't see it, because I was walking towards my car, you see? Cool guys don't look at explosions. <laughs> but I heard it. Pacha! Went a little whoosh, followed by a couple of clink clinks. Pacha? What kind of sound is that? You know, like something small and metallic blew up, like pachoo! Wouldn't bang work better? No, that's a shot. Wouldn't want to confuse y'all with that. But, ta, what is that? You know, ta? And then what happened? Right, okay. Even the music stopped, it was confused about what Georgie was saying. Then I immediately looked back to see it had fallen over, with its lid open. The flame, it was burning white. Wow. Ain't gonna lie to y'all, I freaked the frick out. <laughs> but before I could do anything, two small figures emerged from the corner, walking towards the lighter. Did they see you? <laughs> yeah, they did. They inspected my lighter while I was just standing there. Then they asked me straight up, is this lighter yours, guy? I said, yeah. Then I fired a question back. Are you the ones who have been messing with cars around here lately? And they said yes. Well, sounds like case closed. So, they weren't ghosts? Hell no, thank god for that. Then who were they? Let's just say, they were close friends of the deceased. They're part of the fairy folk, but I didn't expect them at all. Didn't expect... Do you know them? Kinda. In fact, they own the Gnome Noms near my place. Oh, wow! Did they know it was your car, then? Nope, cause I only order takeout. And I usually walk there. What was the reason for all the vandalism, then? Was it the tree? It all started because of a broken promise. And we have to start way back for that. You remember why the tree was there in the first place, right? Yeah. The tragic hit and run. At the time, the court ruling practically let the driver off the hook outside the DUI charge. Well, it sparked a huge protest. Good! In response to it, the mayor at the time gave his word to the victim's family. He promised to keep the tree as a landmark for the community. Oh, no. And the vow was kept well after his tenure was over. But he died a few years ago. And we all know recently what happened to the tree. I see. So it was their attempt to keep the memory alive. Not just for their friend, but as a remembrance of the injustice as well. And after all the urban renewals the city has gone through, makes sense if the community that used to be there is gone by now. That's right. There used to be a lot of veteran housing and low-rise apartments in the area. Now it's filled with never-ending projects. Oh. Don't you just love gentrification? Oh, dear. You okay? Oh, yeah. Sorry. There's something about it bothers me a bit. Like what? Their unique disposition after they pass. It bothers me that their own memories are insufficient enough to erate ensure their existence. And by failing to remember, we, the outside party, will also gradually lose track of their existence. It just doesn't feel right to me. I get what you mean. An odd erasure of existence. But apparently that's why they keep animals. The Gnome Noms owner told me they have a large mastiff living in their place. Others even take care of multiple animals at once. Interesting. I suppose that's why some folk prefer living near the wilderness. Pet animals don't live long either. Right. But the erasure starts happening if they're completely forgotten, right? Something like that, I guess. I'm not sure. Right, okay. But that doesn't normally happen anyway. How do we pay respects or remember someone who died a long time ago? Like our ancestors, for example. It's our call, isn't it? Huh. Every April, Rachel and I would visit my wife's grave. We used to visit her grandparents' graves, too, when my wife was still alive. If our extended family was visiting, they'd join us. We'd clean their gravestones, bring food, and have a feast while catching up. It's how Nekomimis honor the dead. I'm sure other cultures have their own ways, too. Right. I truly think continuing the tradition is something we do for ourselves, though. To remember the deceased and 
all the reasons they mattered to us. So except for the weird erased memory part, it sounds on par to me. It's the effort of the living to remember the dead anyway. You're right. Unless you believe in life after death, memories are for us, not for the dead. Exactly! It would be great if we could all remember and help each other. Because keeping track of any sort of history is a team effort. Since the best way to gain wisdom is to learn from the past, whether it's bad or good. Yeah. Speaking of the Gnome Noms owners, though... What happened to them after all that? Oh, right. Did you arrest them? Nope. Huh? Are you going to let them go? Not necessarily. But I got an idea on what I have to do. Right now, I'm just happy there's no ghosts involved. Still, that was truly something else. Yeah, what a night it must have been. It is what it is. It was a canon event. You okay, Gala? What's up, big guy? Something on your mind? No, nothing. Shame about that lighter of yours, though. Oh yeah, it's probably busted, right? That's the thing. It works just fine, not even a scratch. Really? But that thing blew up, didn't it? Like, pathaw? <laughs> Heck, we even debated the sound effects and everything. As I said, it still works fine. So I don't know what else to tell you. I see. What you thinking about? You want to know what I think? No. It's haunted. No, it's not. <laughs> that thing is definitely haunted. What are you talking about? The white flame is a bit unnatural, I agree. And I remember how you kept forgetting your lighter here. Hey now, a man is allowed to forget stuff as he gets older, no? Yeah, but you took it another time and it came back. As for the blowing up, it was probably a well-timed bad chemical reaction or something. All right, Agent Scully. This thing is a real old after all. If that's the case, you might want to stop carrying it around. At any rate, I believe you now, officer. There's no such thing as coincidence, indeed. I still think it's a ghost, though. Shut it, Henry. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> In any case, a mystery solved. For now, at least. I wonder what his idea is. Hmm. <laughs> He's gotta get real close to the phone. Oh. oh no, I think I have to go now. I didn't realize I missed multiple messages earlier because I was so engrossed in your story. Sorry to rush off. I'll see you all again next time. Sure, safe trip. Nice seeing you again, Henry. Take care. Yeah, it was the first time I saw you in this game, I believe. So, have a good one. Let me move over there. You're so tall, I keep forgetting. You know, all that talking made me thirsty. You want anything? I'm good. Then one espresso for me, please. Alright, copy, copy, copy. Easiest drink this night. Yeah. Boop. Here's your espresso officer, and let me check my thing. Anybody on here? Ooh, Gal is all the way up. And I thought, wasn't Georgie? Oh, Georgie's all the way up now, too. Dislikes ghosts. Man, <laughs> after everything. Thanks. Great as always. So what's next, officer? What's your plan after this? Other than talking to him? I guess I'll focus on the rumors. Word is going around that cars are being messed up there. It's kind of expected though, isn't it? There's no point in adding to citizens' worries when the case is pretty much over. And I don't want bad press to paint over the area's history. You're right. There's nothing like rumors. Without being stopped, they'll just spiral out of control. Time to leave, I guess. Duty calls? Something like that. I suppose I'll do the same. It's quite late, after all. Thanks for listening to us, Yabby. <laughs> the old men ramble. The pleasure is all mine. I love your guys' stories, especially the tree one. It's been very interesting to follow. And sad. <laughs> well, take care and see you later, yeah? Have a good night, Yabby. Safe trip, you two. Bye! See y'all later. An end to another night. I just got a spam call. Oh man, I'm so glad we got to see Aqua and Murder again. I, I'm kind of sad, they've been very absent from this game. I don't know if there's a sequel in the works. I know we still have a few more days, but I'd love to see more of them sometimes. Especially after the 
contract. I'd love to see their game come to completion. It was nice to see them at all, though, especially to see them having made up after the argument they had last time. That was very upsetting. But they're back together. Um, and as for Gala, I wonder if he's okay. He seemed to be thinking about something. I hope he knows that he is invited to the wedding, too. Hyde is totally going to ask him, is this plus one? Who else would he ask? He loves Gala. That's the reason he's moving back to Seattle. We know that for a fact. And also, Georgie's story. It's so interesting. So the Gnome Noms people knew about the deceased, and they've, they've been part of it? And what's with that white light from the lighter? I know he said it was probably a chemical reaction, but still, I can't help but think it was something different. The lighter had an odd feeling to it, right? So maybe it had something to do with that. Maybe the memory of the deceased will live on? I don't know. I hope we'll hear more about that. I hope this isn't the last time we'll see Georgie. I want to know more! That tree story is so interesting. It's sad, though, at the same time. It's sad that this only started getting figuring it figured out because people started, like, vandalizing stuff. They should have been remembered from the beginning. There should have been a way, like, the mayor made a promise and it was broken as soon as he was out of office. Or as soon as he died? I, I can't remember. But either way, it seems like the second he was gone, the vow was just broken and it's really sad. And it doesn't help that they're basically, like, changing up the area entirely. Who cares about the history of it? Just take down this tree that's from a person who was brutally killed. Who cares? It's so ridiculous. But at least Georgie's starting to figure it out, and hopefully he can help Nom Noms people. He said he's not arresting them, so I wonder what his plan is, and what he's going to do about the rumors. Maybe we'll find out more next time. But until then, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Remember to take care of yourself, be careful with your lighter during rituals, and have a good day.